In this lesson, I'm going to show you the basic markup for creating the layout of your page. We're going to look into using header elements, footer elements, and how to divide your main content area. So let's create a new file, and we'll call this layout.html. Once again, I will paste in some markup, and let's get started. So we need to tell the browser, create the markup for the header, the footer, and the main content area. So if this is a little confusing, let's return to NetTouch. Notice if I zoom out a few clicks, most websites will follow the same pattern. For example, I have a header section right here, and this will usually display my logo, navigation links, perhaps a search bar. And then you have your main content area, and this could be your blog postings. It could be whatever the focus of your web page is. That would be referred to as the main content. And then typically, though not required, you will have a footer at the very bottom. And this will display perhaps additional links, footers, uh, copyright information, additional logos, things of that nature. Let's look at another one. Let's browse to codecanyon.net. Once again, we have a header. Then we have the main content area for the focus of our web page. And then once again, you have the footer area for additional logos and links. All right, so now that we know that mostly all websites will follow this pattern, how can we do the same for our website? All right, we're first going to take advantage of some new HTML5 elements that were introduced. And these are header and footer. Header, footer. Now, one thing that's really important to keep in mind is it's easy to assume that the header element was made specifically for the header of your website, but that is not the case. And the exact same thing is true for the footer. The header element was made to be the header of its content, of its container. So for example, you could have a header of a website, but also if you have a blog entry, you could additionally have a header for that blog entry. Let's return to NetTouch, and you'll see that we have our header up here, but then we easily could have another header within our article that would contain information about the article, the title, who it was written by, the date. That could be placed within an additional footer. So it's perfectly likely and acceptable to have multiple header elements on your page, and the same is true for footers. In this case, though, we will use it traditionally. So within here, I will simply type header one, my great website. Now you could additionally paste more in here. In fact, why don't we take our list of links and put that within our header section like so. All right, so now if I preview that, we have our header. Now the nice thing about this is remember, let's go ahead and link to that style sheet again, and I'll paste that right here. Notice I'm copying and pasting whenever I can. And now if we come down here and go header, background, red, that will affect the entire contents of that page preview, and now our entire header section is red. Now I want you to be careful though about generalizing as much as this. As we discussed, you could have multiple header elements on the page. So if you only want to refer to the topmost header, you have a couple options. One, you could apply an ID to this. You could apply a class if you want multiple elements to receive the styling, or you could target it directly by doing something and this is a little bit advanced for what we're doing right now, like this. And what this means is only target header elements that are direct children of the body element. So let's quickly go over that. I don't want to do too much because you haven't learned CSS yet. But a direct child is an element that is an immediate child of a parent element. So let's take a look. The header element, let's look into its children. A direct child would be the H1 and a navigation element. But let's take a look at this UL right here. Is that a direct child of the header? No, it's a descendant. It's still a child, but it would be referred to more as a descendant. The direct parent of the UL is going to be not the H3, but the navigation element. And this is where you can really use the tabbing nature to understand where the parent-child relationships occur. In this case, the H3 is a sibling of an unordered list. The unordered list is a sibling of the H3. The navigation element is a direct parent of the H3. The navigation element is a sibling of the H1 element. The list item is a descendant of the header element. So hopefully that makes sense. So what we're saying here in our style sheet is only target the header elements that are direct child children 
of the body element. If you want to see some proof of concept, let's go into here and let's do something like div and then we'll do a header hello, something like that. Now if I preview this, can you see that this is not being targeted? If I remove that though and come back, it is being targeted because in this case we're saying get all header elements that are children of the body element. Now traditionally you would just do it like this because that's implied, but when you do it like this, you can provide a little bit more control by specifying that you only want direct children. Okay, we went on a tangent there, but that is a good tip to know. Let's return to our layout and let's get rid of this. And now that we've created our header section, we need a wrapper for our main content area. So we'll do something like this. My blog article. And within paragraph tags, let's paste in some lorem text like so. And maybe let's paste in a couple paragraphs. So if I preview this, sure enough, we have our header and our blog article. There's one problem though, is what if much like we did with our header, we want to apply a background color to our main content section. Well, what we have right now, there's nothing to latch onto. And that's what I want you to think of divs for. They are for layout. They are to latch onto, to have something to style. In this case, if you wanted to apply a background color of green to our main content area, how would you do it? Uh, you could apply it to an h2 tag and a paragraph tag, but at that point you're generalizing. Most of the time it's a better idea to use something like, you'll see something like content or wrap or content, something like that. Now if you'd prefer, you could also use a class name. Now there are several advantages to using class names over IDs, and we'll get to those in the future. But for now, just keep it in mind. So now if I preview it, nothing has changed, but now we have the ability to target that entire container, like so. Return, preview, and now we are styling these. Now of course I'm not suggesting you use these colors in your websites, but it's a good example of how you can manipulate entire blocks of content. And finally, let's go and take care of the footer section. And once again, I will simply do my footer. Save that, and if I preview it, now we have successfully created the basic skin for a website, your header area that has some links, your main content section, and your footer section. Now if you want to apply some additional formatting, you could say body. If we wanted to use the body as a wrapper with 600 pixels, and set the margin left and margin right to auto. And that way we create a centered web page. All right, so you've learned about using the header and the footer elements. I will see you in the next lesson.